Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and today I'm with Jim at the Bricks Minifigs in Wheaton, Illinois, and he's going to be taking us around the whole store and giving you a tour of what they have on display and what they have for sale here at this store. So before we dive on in, how long has this store been open here? Uh, we've been open just over four years now. Okay, very nice. And you've got lots of great stuff on display. We'll see some like custom creations as well as obviously tons of sets and parts. We can start right here with the build a minifig section. So obviously you can come in and create basically any minifig you can possibly imagine. Yeah, um, we, and we try to keep this stocked up with as kind of many cool, interesting parts as we can. Um, you know, we do go out of our way to kind of source this and, and keep it full of, you know, fun stuff. Hidden side's been great for a lot of that. There's a lot of fun colored hairs and purple hairs with goggles and different things that the kids like. Um, so yeah, we, we keep this pretty well fully stocked so you can do just about anything. We also try to keep a lot of common parts too because we do get a lot of D&D people that are trying to make their characters okay. or brides and grooms that are trying to make their bridal parties. So suits are always very popular, so are dresses. Sure, um, yeah, you've got those kind of general things that people are always probably looking for on a sure. regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, everything can be improved with a ninja sword. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so as we move over here, I like these very colorful base plates. What are these? All right, so we carry, you know, both the, uh, the actual Lego brand, um, some different ones from, you know, older sets and classic things. Also, we carry an aftermarket brand here um, that comes in a lot of different colors. Um, up here, we have the 6x6 six six ones, and up here, we carry some, you know, various Lego ones from various sets that mm -hmm. have come out over the years. Um, we've also got, you know, this is kind of the landing area for some of our larger parts, like boat hulls and airplane wings and kind of anything that doesn't fit in a basket anywhere else. <laughs> I Points for the color coordination here as well. Looks very impressive. <laughs> yes, yes, you can tell I'm, I'm very OCD with the uh, the rainbow coordination here. Um, and then some smaller smaller organizations over here, like the uh, the old kind of like robo pirate type stuff. Yeah. So over here we have we don't sort a lot of stuff. Most of the things end up in our bulk tables here, but um, for some of our larger builders, we do carry certain specific things sorted to the side. So. Castles always very popular, so we carry both old and new corners and old and you know, um, old and new basic wall mm -hmm. sections, turret tops, different boats. We get a lot of military people in here, so they're always looking for these, um, as well as some different things for the train builders here. So we try to as much as possible keep train wheels and plates in stock. Um, that's not always as easy as it seems, but. Um, you know, we do our best. Same thing down here, we also carry like rocks and things like that. As you can see, coming off of Brick World Weekend, uh, someone came in yesterday and bought, you know, every rock in the store. But uh, in general, those baskets are pretty full. That, that is a good thing to mention that we are filming this, yeah, right after Brick World Chicago, which is massive Lego convention not too far from here. So I'm sure you just get swamped during that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's been a fun weekend, so. Um, but yeah, also up here we have some of our, you know, kind of custom wall mount mm -hmm. um, fig stands. I know every single Lego person has a space problem in their house. Um, these are great for being able to get your mini figs up and out of the way. And they look great too. For sure. Then we'll start with some of the, the first of the sealed set displays. One of my favorite themes is architecture. I always love to see that represented here. Yep. You got some custom stuff down here as well. Yeah. So we have our small architecture section here with pretty much whatever's current at the time. Um, you know, right now it's Statue of Liberty, White House, Singapore, Paris, Tokyo. Uh, I think New York is also current, but I'm out of stock on that one. Um, down here we have kind of our little Pixel Heroes things. These are, uh, these started as an artwork project. We used to do a little class with the kids back before COVID hit, where we could build like little things from video games and stuff. And um, once COVID started, obviously we couldn't do the class anymore, but the people still wanted the little project. So um, we just boxed them up and they kind of live over here. Mm -hmm. Excellent, um, yeah. And then, you know, this is our superhero corner. Okay. So this is all the DC and Marvel stuff. We do a lot of certification work here, which is breaking down a set, piece counting everything, reboxing it so someone can play it as though it was new. So some of the stuff that's 20, 30 years old, that's really the only way to get it now. If you try to buy it new in box, they cost, you know, hundreds mm -hmm. or thousands of dollars. Um, so you'll see a lot of different little certification sets. Some of them have the original box, just like this one, but you can see this one is a Bricks and Minifix certified one. Um, plus we have all the new stuff too, which is always great. And then we have these little guys here, which are the foil packs from Europe. We try to import as many of these as humanly possible because these are the perfect gift if you don't know what to get someone <laughs> and they don't already shop in my store. <laughs> yes. No, that stuff is super fun. Whenever we travel to Europe, I see those and I always wish there was like easier access to that in the US. So I'm, I'm glad you were able to get those in stock. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we have a guy in Europe that pulls in tons of them for us. So this is kind of a regular thing for us. And then you got this great Ninjago display case over here, uh, obviously featuring the Temple of Air Jitsu, a classic set there. 
Yeah, so this is our, our big set display case, or what we call our donut case. We're showing our history here. We used to be a gas station, and this was where they used to put the donuts when I took over. You can still see the napkin holder right here. <laughs> Way to represent the history. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, the, the building is kind of quirky, and, and this is part of the history of it. So um, it makes a great display case, though, for anything that doesn't really fit on the shelves or anywhere else, or just something we want to show off in particular. Um, right now, as you say, it is the Temple of Air Jitsu. That's the one we have in here. but. You know, we have like Boeing Dreamliners and different things that are, are huge, live over here all the time. Yeah, you know, big, big things you want to really put some focus on. Sure. And then up above here, you've actually got some custom displays, right? Yeah, so I'm a bit of an old school gamer, and that tends to show in some of the artwork we play around with in here. So, you know, Final Fantasy. Uh, I like Marvel, too, so we did some Marvel. There's the, next to that is the little ghosts that we've done from Pac-Man. Uh, when Mandalorian came out, I felt the need to make that little symbol, so that's the one that's mm -hmm. above that. The windows are kind of a growing and evolving thing around here. That's cool. So those are like kind of two by four stacked brick type mosaic yep. designs. Correct. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, it's great to see some custom stuff on display like that. And then below that, what do we have in the, the ball area? So this is our, our ball fig table. Um, this is anything cool or from characters from any theme that don't really live anywhere else in the store. Now we do stock, you know, a ton of figs here, but. Um, not everything necessarily has a home in our case, like Chima figs and things like that. Um, we also do some, some little odds and ends ones, like this is a food ball, this particular one is made up of all fruit. So mm -hmm. um, if you're doing a grocery store or something to that effect, we try to have as much cool, interesting stuff for that up here as possible. Um, we also sometimes will do like different treasure balls where it's nothing but gold bars or coins and treasure chests and safes and things like that. So. Kind of um, themed pieces related stuff. Correct, yeah. You try you try to get as much interesting stuff into a ball as you can. So, you know, the little practice dummies from Ninjago <laughs> along with a bunch of weapons so you can throw them at them, you know. Fun mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, that works great. We can move on over here then to some of the glass cases. This was really cool when we were coming into the store. I loved being able to see all these sets on display here and you've got a nice mixture throughout here. Yeah, so um, the reason we like these so much is that a lot of the kids like to get up close and personal with them. And you know, obviously you don't want anybody taking anything apart, but this lets you kind of see it from all three dimensions if you want to really, really get a up close and personal look at the U sets. Um, obviously in natural sunlight too, it shows off the color. So we like that as well. Mm -hmm. And is this just kind of constantly rotating in terms of what you have in all these different cases? Yes. Like I said, we do a lot of certification work, so not much stays used here for very long. Okay. Um, we give everybody a shot to buy it used before we put any labor into it and, you know, um, recertify it. But, um, yeah, so this is where all our, our smaller use sets and things live. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a completely rotating section, so you'll see this is this is everything from classic stuff from the late 70s all the way up until now. I love seeing the older stuff mixed in like this expert builder, like forklift set there next to some of the much newer city sets or some of the friends, whatever the theme might be. Oh yeah, it's always fun to explain to some of the little kids like what a rotary phone might be. <laughs> um, you know, or, or why that man is carrying around such a huge cell phone, you know, things like that. Exactly, but then you've got some sealed stuff up here and some more uh, kind of custom mosaic art. Is that some more video game art there? Yeah, that's uh, Chrono Trigger. That's my favorite video game. So that was the uh, one of the first ones that we ever built on that scale. You know, a Pac-Man ghost is much smaller, but that was the first one we ever tried to do that was significantly larger. Mm -hmm. No, it looks fantastic. Very cool. And then you've got some more uh, sealed sets over here. So what themes are kind of represented in this area? Yeah, so this is kind of our, our new set section here. This is all the new release stuff. Anything that's kind of current from LEGO lives over here that isn't sorted you know, explicitly into another section. So um, some of the new city stuff, Creator, Technic, you know, the classic stuff, which is always great for gifts. Um, that kind of stuff lives on this section of the wall here. Over here we have our Ninjago corner. Um, right now it's predominantly new releases. Ninjago got out of control, so we actually had to split the section. You'll see that a little farther along in the tour. Um, and then we have our Lego friends, elves, Disney princesses. Right now, Buzz Lightyear's kind of living over here until we figure out what to do with him. Um, you know, that's this corner here. Mm -hmm. This is also a good point to mention the really cool walls, which have all these different colors of paint. So it feels very fun in here with a lot of like bricks, minifigs, colors, and Lego colors represented. Oh, sure. And we cram as many little posters and interesting artworks and Basically every square inch of this place has something going on in it if you look really close. Up top here is the uh, sort of the, the dead boxes for the uh, figs that you'll fix. see in, in the displays, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm still missing a Series 1-1, but I think we got pretty much everything else at this point. I love it. 
So then we've got some of the, the middle areas here with some of these standalone cases. What do you keep in this area? Yeah. So over here is where all the, the new Minecraft stuff lives. Um, right next to it here, we do have some of these custom printed Minecraft style base plates. Mm -hmm. And we really, really like these for Minecraft in particular. Um, the reason is Minecraft is a great set, but they don't come with a really solid base plate to mm -hmm. put them on. So if you try to move them around, oftentimes they come apart. Um, this gives you a color for almost everything that they do and gives you something very, very solid to build it on top of. Uh, the benefit of these two is that they do have a ridged lip on there that locks with the next plate in the line. So that when you have them together, if you do decide to build something on that seam, these plates aren't coming apart. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah it's kind of the perfect thing for, you know, the kids to put their stuff on and, and be able to actually move it and play with it. Besides right. Just put it on a shelf. Minecraft stuff gets very expansive very quickly. Very, so. very quickly. <laughs> it's yeah. Good to have something like that. Yeah. And the fact that these tile means you can kind of you make your display as big or as small as you want to. Mm -hmm. And then I see some dots on the on this shelf over here. Yeah, so here's our here's our dot section. Um, you know, we keep all our little bracelets and stuff up here. We also have one of our own customs here in the little magic wand. Um, this was one that we couldn't kind of figure out where to put it. So dots seem to be the best place where it lives. Um, it's totally swooshable, meaning it does have a core. You can play with it. You can swing it around. You're not going to hurt it. So um, yeah, if you do want, you know, custom bracelets mm -hmm. or even to make a custom crown or something like that, this seemed like a nice accessory to go with that. Um, in the middle here, we have our creator stuff. So all the different three-in-ones. You can see we have all the new releases here, as well as some of the older certi or, uh, certified sets. Um, we also try to get as many of these little retired guys as we can. This is kind of a miscellaneous section for a lot of different things. So you have, you know, the Chinese New Year. You have the New Horizons set over here. Some of the video stuff, Dimensions, Bionicle Hero Factory. Um, we do keep stuff in sections as much as possible around here, but. Every once in a while, you get a, a, a random section because LEGO does have so much as far as themes goes. You, you've only got so much space, and there's a lot of themes out yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> there's a finite amount of space there. Um, over here is kind of our poly bag row. This is all the different poly bags that are out, as well as some of the retired ones that we're able to get. Um, the cute little pug dog, of course, being our favorite here in the store. Uh, we also import these from Europe here. These are from the Explorer line. So you won't see these in a lot of places, but they have a lot of different little interesting creatures and. UFOs, and I think this is meant to be scary, but just ends up being adorable instead. Um, so we do have that there. Um, over here is Brick Arms, and Brick Forge, and some other odds and ends stuff. So um, we really like Brick Arms. Obviously, Lego stances, there's no war in Lego Land. But, you know, people still do want to do military <laughs> stuff, and this is nice for that. We also have all the stuff from Star Wars that they carry. Um, you know, the replica Boba Fett gun, or the glow-in-the-dark dark saber, that type of thing. With some um, of these like Lego third-party products like Brick Arms or Brick Forge, how do you decide what you carry? There's that things like you just see a company and you kind of see this is something cool that would be ha nice to have in the store. I'm a little more strict on that. So it has to be something that Lego A does not do themselves, mm -hmm. and B it has to be just as good, if not better, quality than what Lego would have done. Mm -hmm. um, is kind of our stance on it. So yeah, besides the Brick Arm stuff, we have some Brick Forge for the D&D &D people that like to build like knights and characters, and we even have these little custom movie posters which are great for if you have a palace cinema or if you have one of the other theater sets, these make a nice little touch. Right, any kind of like city decorations, those pieces always work well for. Sure, sure. Then you got uh, Mario represented over here. Yeah, so this is kind of our rotating section for Mario. The figs are over there, but um, the actual sets are, are right here. We also, like I said, try to carry as many of the poly bags as we can, um, especially for gifts and stocking stuffers. Those are always great. Then if we move this direction, you've got the uh, famous uh, bulk section where you can come in and just pick your way through whatever pieces you want in here. I yeah. saw this piece earlier. Do you, I don't even know what this thing is from. That's one of the covers for one of the old soccer sets, if you remember those. It had okay. a clear little bubble. You had your little soccer guy in oh. there, but this was the slip-on cover for it. There you go. Um, you know, not actually a piece, per se, but something <laughs> someone might be looking for. So, you know, we left it in here, and someone else will scoop it up someday. Same with the little ramp there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big piece. Not everybody's going to need that, but you never know <laughs> which customer is going to want that specific thing. So. Um, yeah, this is just a rotating, you know, conglomeration of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is so much fun to be able to come in and just pick your way through and find whatever pieces you need, especially when you have a convention like Brick World that happens nearby, you get a ton of builders coming through looking for stuff like that. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then against this far wall, looks like we've got uh, some Star Wars and then a whole bunch of city stuff as well. But yeah, so this is our Star Wars section. Obviously, Star Wars is one of LEGO's bigger sections. Um, so we have all the new in-box stuff. We also carry some different certified sets too. Um, I mean, you can see this one's a retired one, but once again, 
the certified one, and we do try to have the original box as often mm -hmm. as possible. We just like those, they look great. Um, we do some of our own, so, you know, little battle droid packs here, 12 droids, 12 guns, army in a box, basically, sure, is yeah. what, you're, what you're going for here. And every kid tries to make these, so. Um, we also have the Droidico one right next to it if you want to go with a little bit more of a heavy troop. Yeah, those army builders, especially Star Wars fans, they love that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we sell through these like you wouldn't believe. Um, we also have foil packs for Star Wars too. Star Wars probably has one of the more healthy selections of those that are out there. Um, so we always have, you know, different rotating strips of various ones. Uh, right now the Naboo Starfighter seems to be one of the more popular because of the Mandalorian. Same thing with the Razor Crest. Um, but this changes all the time, and we even have more in the fig cases as we go along. Um, another custom one here. We do do these little little sabers for different things. So, you know, the Maul one, the Luke one. This is an ever-changing section depending on what we're able to put together and, and work with. Yeah. So you've got a, a nice variety of these custom kits you're selling here. Is that designed like in-house with employees at the store or where does that come from? Yeah, so we have a designer on staff that helps us put those together and you know, we have, they all have full instruction books and everything okay. so you can put them together at home. That's great. Um, right next to it there, we actually have some more customs. So our little Shelby's and we tried to do a Jeep that you could use for either just at the beach or as a military one and it goes both ways. So we do this one in green and black. Um, it's nice in that you can put a surfboard on top if you want to, but that same mount also does a machine gun quite nicely. So <laughs> What a versatile vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also carry a handful of these. Um, these are actually designed by one of the local firemen. He puts these kits together for us. So um, These are nice in that Lego tends to lean more into the European design, um, obviously being from Europe. Mm -hmm. But some kids do want the one that dad rides in, and you can see every day down the street. So we do two different versions of this one. This one here is engine number one. Um, based on a Pierce Enforcer, so it's based on an actual truck. Um, I've actually had it out here with the, the Wheaton Fire Department and compared it against the original, and you're not going to get much closer than wow. that. Wow, yeah. that's very cool. Yeah, it's great to have that local connection kind of in the store as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. And some bigger city sets all, along here? Yeah, so this is, you know, our, our anything that's not necessarily a new release kind of ends up over here on the city section. Um, once again, it's a very, very rotating selection mm -hmm. of sets. We try to keep it always fresh, always new. A lot of certifieds over here all the time. Getting more mixed uh, sets over here, I do want to give a shout out to this small little pirate raft set. I've always loved the classic pirates theme, so it's cool to see that represented. Yeah, see the interesting thing is that they didn't have poly bags back then. Everything came in a little box. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the small sets didn't survive through the years. You know, you, everybody tended to hold on to your one big pirate ship. That was the one thing you kept intact. But the little ones more often than not got thrown into the bin and, <laughs> you know, kind of lost to the bulk pile. So. We try to restore and certify as many of these little guys as we can. Mm -hmm. And even going much older with these like Lego basic sets down there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like I said, you know, the, I think the oldest one in the store right now is probably 1978, but it doesn't, age doesn't really matter to us on that. You know, Lego's, Lego's good, it doesn't, regardless of age. So um, once again, you have another one of our little customs here. Uh, we do do these little battle mech things for the kids. We also do this anti-gravity sculpture, which I know how that works and it still looks like wizardry to me, <laughs> it but um, it makes a great little thing for your desk. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, we did split Ninjago up, so we have our Ninjago movie section over here by the Lego movie stuff. Um, that lives here, these are all certified. Um, and then Harry Potter and other random stuff. <laughs> yeah, the big, the big cars in stock, that's always cool to see those, those, just the packaging alone on those sets looks incredible there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, we also carry, you know, not a lot of books, but Anything interesting that shows up on trade, we try to put over here. This is one of the Klutz books, hmm. you know, and it has a lot of different little little projects you can do with the parts that come in here. So, um, you know, even if it's not strictly speaking a Lego set, as long as it's cool. Right. It's related know? products, and certainly something like that can get kids or adults interested in, in building more and kind of teach parts techniques and that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And then you'll see some more of our custom base plates. These ones are more battlefield related, that type of thing. Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of some of the old like Forestman type things, but just a lot more detail on these than Lego did in the, the 90s. Correct. Um, and then once again, even more foil packs. Um, you'll see these hanging everywhere in the store. Like I said, we try to get as many as possible. This is the Jurassic World ones. And we also have some more of the, uh, the little Explorer series ones over here too. Mm -hmm. So that takes us to all of the minifigures then. So we'll just kind of start in the end here with the Star Wars section and make our way through. And obviously a tremendous variety that you've got on display here, but. What's, what's some of the best stuff you've got in the Star Wars case right now? 
Um, you know, we have seven display cases in the store that are always getting filled, always changing. Like I said, you're actually seeing us run low right now. Oh, so wow. as, mu as much as it seems like we have right at the moment, we're coming off a big weekend. <laughs> um, you know, we have different sections that are, are always stocked up. So, you know, Jedi and Sith are up top here. Obviously, we have, you know, different, uh, all the Anakins and Obi-Wans. And we have a whole big section of clones, which seems to be one of the more popular mm -hmm. ones. Um, that's pretty well always stocked. We do a custom little e-web there if you want to make your your own heavy artillery. And once again, as I mentioned, you'll see foil packs scattered through here. So that's the Acklay from uh, episode two. Um, we keep that one in here next to the animals. That seemed to be the best place to put it. Um, we also have some different, you know, brick arm stuff. So once again, the dark sabers up here on top. And then we keep some sections sorted on their own. So Endor kind of lives up here. So all our Ewoks and scout troopers and the different versions of Luke and Leia. You know, those have a home here. We also do speeders of our own, if you want to add speeder bikes to yours. And we keep this fully stocked, so there's always Ewok gliders here, too. Um, you know, moving, moving a little ways across the galaxy here, you got the Hoth stuff. Um, and once again, snow troopers and, and different, you know, Hoth rebel troopers, the different versions of Luke and Han and Leia. Um, you know, we have Tauntauns up here, and of course the foil packs for the probe droids, which you can never have too many of those. Mm-hmm. And then last but not least, you have your, your Tatooine slash Jabba's Palace section. Um, you know, obviously we have Jabba and the band and Jawas and Slave Leia and Lando and all kinds of different stuff. Um, you know, all, all these plates, even though, yes, they're on that planet, the figures in them rotate constantly and we're always putting stuff out. Right, right. And Star Wars is so popular. I'm sure there's just like constant people coming in looking for all that stuff. Every day. <laughs> Um, on the bottom here, just to wrap up Star Wars, we have a whole bunch of versions of different droidicas that we do over there. Um, technically speaking, they never did a black one on screen, but we thought, you know, they might have done a stealth one. So we, we do that one here. Uh, we also do the destroyer droids from Old Republic. Um, this is some of the new trilogy stuff, so a lot of your first order things live here. Um, as I said, been a busy weekend, but right there is usually our rebel section. You can see where Hera is. Um, you know, and then we have like 3PO, the R2 droids, and tons of different battle droids and super battle droids. Yeah, it's, it's great to have such a nice variety for everyone here. And then even like, like you pointed out earlier, more brick arms and kind of custom stuff in the background there. Oh yeah, yeah, all kinds of interesting stuff back there. Um, on the orange here is our kind of rotating classic section. So knights and pirates and space is, is basically what lives there. And once again, that's a pretty broad category. So it, it changes all the time, you know. Um, next to that, you have your Ninjago movie. And up top, of course, here is the different Ninjago set figures. Yeah, and great use of the various base plates as well to display these and very, very eye-catching with all the minifigs on there. It's actually really helpful for us to be able to say, oh, Ninjago, that's, that's all on the green, mm -hmm. or Star Wars, that's going to be on the gray, you know, when we're trying to tell people where things are in the store. So. What do, you, what do you find is the reaction, especially from like younger kids, a lot of these more historic themes? I mean, this stuff is pushing like 30 years old now. <laughs> uh, you know what? Castles and knights never go out of style. <laughs> so it's just as popular with the young kids as it is with you know, people from my generation that grew up with that. Yeah, perfect. Well, round the corner here then, it looks like we get into some more of the wildlife and the animals. Yeah, so over here is our animal case. Um, this is kind of what we call our cutesy section. So. Um, a lot of little low cost type things, little little puppies and squirrels and cats and sheep and things like that. Um, over here you start getting some of the bigger stuff, so you have your, your pigs and sheep and glow in the dark fish and all that stuff. And some of the explorer animals even are right here. Um, I still think that looks like Tony the Tiger. <laughs> um, different horses and things, saddles. Um, down below is predominantly dinosaurs, so you know T-Rexes and Baryonyxes and some of the bigger things. Um, as you move along, you'll see some of the more classic stuff, plus like raptors and that type thing. Um, we do carry a pretty regular assortment of things from the old Dino series. So the mutant raptors and mutant T-Rexes, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then down on the very, very bottom is kind of our singles brick arm section. Um, so if you want to buy just a single gun, you know, to outfit your Jeep with, or, you know, maybe you need 20 of the same machete, you know, um, we have all that kind of down there sorted out for the kids. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Now, as we move down, I'm starting to notice more displays on the walls here. So it looks like you've got sets, but then also some really nicely organized stuff. So how do you kind of use that space? Yeah, so these are all, you know, even more use sets. So kind of the things that don't fit in the cubes in the front of the store land over here. Um, we've got everything kind of, you know, interspaced here. So you can see this one here has the instructions and everything on it ready to go. 
down below here is our figure storage, and this is how we stay organized here. Um, so everything for Star Wars battle droids, for instance. And, yeah, I don't mind showing you what's in Perfect. here. You know, you can see all the battle droid parts kind of sorted by color here. Um, some other things that, yes, I know a skeleton isn't a battle droid, but they're built the exact same way, so they end <laughs> up in this case. Um, so th this is all the parts that we use to make what you're seeing up in the front cases here. Yeah, I'm sure staying organized is very important with the amount of stuff you have coming into the store and just trying to keep track of everything. Correct. Um, back here on the top windowsill, you all see uh, a lot of our used Bionicle, uh, some of the buildable Star Wars things, and even some odds and ends brickheads. Um, those kind of land on this windowsill in the back here. You know, once again, we have more pixel art here on the back window. We've been playing around with doing, you know, different sun catchers and things like that. So you came on a good day because it's nice and sunny out. <laughs> there you go. A great yeah. example of that. I mean, all of those kind of trans pieces just work so well when the sun's shining on them. Correct. You got some Mario representation there. Yeah. Unfortunately, Luigi is not doable in sun catcher. <laughs> the colors don't exist to do oh. him properly, but uh, Mario looks great. So <laughs> we managed to knock together him. Um, and this, like I said, as we're playing around and experimenting, that changes all the time. Um, now I see like the uh, the guitar ideas set up there. So the, those kind of more one off sets, like some of the ideas type projects and stuff. How, how does that typically sell compared to some of the larger themes here? You know, you would think uh, the one offs would sell better than some of the main theme stuff. But the truth of it is, is that different people like different things. So, um, you know, yes, this might draw in a dad that wouldn't be into Lego at all, but no more or less than than the Minecraft thing would. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have customers that like different things and that's fine. We try to have as much of a selection back here as possible. You know, even for, for those of us that are, are a little older, <laughs> you know, once again, uh, you do have some of the old stuff here. I believe this is 1978 as well. Yeah, yeah. Some of those very early minifigures and uh, with like kind of a, a lighthouse helicopter build there. Yeah. And, and once again, I love having this in the store because it's neat to show the kids. Back before there was printing, these were all stickered on the front. I don't know if you can see that very yeah. well on camera, but... Um, it's crazy how far they've come when you look at how basic that, that looks. Yeah, you know, so simple, but, you know, still works just fine with everything else nowadays. So, something great. Um, over here, you know, we have our, our princess, one of our, one of our larger pixel things that we've done. Mm -hmm. She's a little bit scary to move around the store and ended up being much taller than we thought when we started. So, she couldn't make a window, but uh, she does kind of live over here and keep an eye on us while we're working. Very good. We can move back down to some more minifigures as we make our way around then. What is this case? Looks like a lot of superhero stuff. Yeah, so red is Marvel. So this is all your Marvel stuff. Um, different things from Spider-Man or Guardians of the Galaxy and, you know, uh, different versions of Iron Man. We try to keep that all sorted in here. Um, up top here is your Simpsons series one and two. Uh, we also have kind of the Minecraft animals and some of the figures as well as, you know, any Lord of the Rings and Hobbit things that come in. Um, blue is DC for us, so that's all down here, all your, all your many versions of Batman that there are. <laughs> Gotta have all of the Batmans represented. <laughs> well, of course, I, I think there's well over 300 last time I checked. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, we maybe carry 20 or 30 at any given moment, but there is quite a bit more. We also have our Dimensions and, and Miscellaneous Figs plate, which is on the lime green down here. Uh, and what that is, is... Uh, things from LEGO Dimensions or things that don't necessarily fit anywhere else but we think are really cool and we want to have a section where we can find them easily. So, um, you know, that's kind of where all that stuff lives. And up top here starts the series stuff. So we do stock everything from series 1 all the way to 22 and all the ancillary series as well. So, you know, all that is regularly here. It's something we go out of our way to keep in stock. You will see some random sections thrown in the middle like our little baby section here. Um, so we have, you know, babies and teddy bears and some stuff that we do ourselves. So, you know, the little, uh, little strollers and buggies and baby carriers and bottles and pretty much anything someone would need to outfit a nursery. That's, that's all sitting right here. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned like, for example, with the Batmans where there's so many examples, but you can only carry so many. So if somebody comes in looking for maybe a, a very specific example of a minifigure set or something, but you don't have it in stock, will you kind of keep an eye out for that and try to try to get that in stock if there's someone looking for that, or how does that work? It's case by case. Um, there are certain things that are easier to get than others. If I know someone's looking for it, though, that's always helpful when I'm, when I'm trading because I can try mm -hmm. to get it if I see it. Um, you know, but when it comes to that, like I said, if it's not out there to get, sometimes we can't. But right, you right. Know, we do our best for our regulars and our customers. Mm -hmm. um, over here, once again, more series stuff. You'll also see some of the other assorted themes here. So on the bottom there on the white, we have Ghostbusters. And once again, you have one of our customs here. So everybody knows that you they make the little Stay puff, but come on, 
you need the big space <laughs> yes. bus. Um, we also have another version in the works that'll be, you know, approximately two and a half, three feet tall. Wow. To be even more imposing against an actual Ghostbuster. <laughs> um, you know, back here we have our, our Toy Story, Indiana Jones, some of the odds and ends, Pirates of the Caribbean, Scooby-Doo, SpongeBob. Um, some of the smaller set series is that, you know, people might be looking for, but, you know, might not support an entire plate on its own. Um, and then up here is some of the new releases. So series 22, which is, as we're filming this, the most current numbered series and the Muppets, which is, you know, brand new. We just saw an incredible build at Brickworld using this new blue kind of uh, barred minifigure as like a monk piece and it's this massive monastery build and using them in that. So it's, it's great to see all of these new iterations of minifigures and how builders can use those. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And Lego does a really good job of kind of keeping these mixed up. So you never really know what's coming and that's part of the fun. <laughs> And then some more like Disney characters here yeah. it looks like. So over here in the first case we have on, on the brown is our Harry Potter section. Um, and then up here are some of the smaller series. So you have your Lego Movie 1 and 2. Once again we have some custom printed little yellow brick road plates to go along with those. You know, video and up here is Unikitty and some of the Super Mario stuff, Disney 1 and 2. Uh, once again we keep as much of that stuff in stock as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that stuff is always massively popular. <laughs> you oh, get yeah, kids yeah. coming in looking for all that. <laughs> yeah, it never fails. And getting close to the end here, obviously you've got the register section, and then what are these smaller items out here? Yeah, so this is our 5 and $10 case. These are different things that, that we've saved as we've been sorting through collections that, you know, uh, we don't want to throw necessarily a, a cool vehicle or anything in the bulk table, but um, just to keep it reasonable for everybody, we have, you know, two different shelves here for some of the partials that come in. Um, up here is our, our salad bar, which is, uh, you know, different plants, trees, leaves, flowers, things like that. Um, next to it here is, once again, some of the other pieces that we hear people look for all the time. I mean, brick separators, it feels like you probably have a million at home, but you do wear them out, so that's nice to have. Barrels and treasure chests and cannons and, you know, dollies and motorcycles and things like that. So that all lives up here next to the register. You know, and then back here, of course, is even more use set sections. Here's a unique set there you don't see very often. It has one of those big raised base plates. Was that like the like extreme stunts theme or something like that? Yeah, it sure was. You know how it was in the 90s? Everything was extreme. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are kind of cool, especially with the construction. The way they did the bridge is really clever how this is, you know, um, kind of flops around a little bit, but still manages to be stable if you want to drive your, your chrome-piped monster truck across <laughs> it. Um, so that, that's a lot of fun. We also have Angry Birds, which you don't see too often anymore. And of course our 89 Batmobile, which I just love playing with when it's here. Oh yeah. Do you find yourself always learning more about the kind of the history of Lego and like new sets and themes that maybe you weren't aware of that specific pieces existed or that sort of thing is like stuff comes in the door? You know, stuff comes in all the time that we haven't seen before. I, I can't say that there's too many themes that surprise me okay. anymore. You know, we've been doing this for a little yeah. while now, but every once in a while something will walk in the door that I, I have no words for. Um, you know, <laughs> press kits from the Lego movie or, you know, things that you wouldn't expect to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all sorts of one-off things with like Comic-Con things or whatever it might be that were just kind of unusual stuff that they've done over the years. Yeah, um, we even had one trade in particular where the box was more interesting than the actual trade that came in the box. And what it was was a large box, about this large, um, that was printed like Scooby-Doo. And it had a bunch of kind of bricks and stuff in it. And we sorted that out. But that box was nagging at me because it had a Lego mark on it huh. as though it was something important. And we called in a couple of our experts. Uh, none of them knew anything. But we all kind of did our research. And finally, we figured out that this box at one point had one of every Scooby-Doo set from the original launch, along with these little things you'd hold up to yourself to give yourself Shaggy's hair or Scooby-Doo's collar. <laughs> and uh, it was meant to go out to the, the video lo or bloggers that are out mm -hmm. there on, on launch so that they could review all the sets. Um, one of those interesting things that you know just showed up one day. Yeah, exactly. So we've seen a lot of great variety of stuff you have for sale here in the store. If someone can't make it in, in person, do you sell online or how does that work? Well, we don't. We're strictly okay. an in-person brick and mortar store here. Um, a lot of the stuff we deal with is, is one-off or, you know, use stuff that would be hard to ship in any case. So um, it's something where you really do have to kind of come in to get the full experience out of it. There you go. So yeah, make sure if you're ever uh, in the, the Wheaton, Illinois area, you can stop in here at the Bricks and Minifix store. If they do want to, to learn more online, where are you guys kind of most active? We are most active on Facebook and Instagram. Um, both of them get kind of the same material. We do a comic every morning at 7 a.m. It's called Our Daily Humor. It's the <laughs> finest of dad jokes and puns. Um, obviously, we do one every day, so it's more quantity, not quality. Don't expect it to be, you know, 
giggling funny every day, but we do our best. Um, we also do at least two posts a day for different things that have come in on trade. Perhaps it's new in box sets, maybe it's figures. Today was certified sets as of this morning, or maybe it's a cute foil bag or something. But um, you'll see a couple posts a day with something new. There is always something going on around here to talk about. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure to put links to those social media sites in the description below so you can check out more about the store online. But definitely, if you ever have the opportunity and are in the area, stop on in here at Bricks and Minifigs and check out all of the incredible stuff they have for sale. Thanks so much for showing us around today. Yeah, absolutely. It. My pleasure.